Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. Could you imagine if our country got overthrown by another country for for our political views, our religious views, our our freedom to to choose and to speak out? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if another country just decided one day that we're going to overthrow these bastards because they don't agree with our policy. They don't agree with our our way of life. Can you imagine? So I want to compare two, uh, two, two interesting cases, two interesting places that we're both friends with. These are both, uh, uh, well, at least one of them is, and one of them was up until recently, right? But let's look at the comparison. See, now, the, 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 the deal with Venezuela is interesting because the United States government has labeled them a troika of tyranny, right, along with Cuba, the impotent Cuba, the little island off the coast there, and uh, Nicaragua, who we decimated in the 90s, right, right, are, are, are some sort of a troika of, of tyranny, right? Now, what about, what is tyranny? That's what I want to look at, right? A, a dictatorship, a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions, right? That's what Venezuela is currently being... Um, uh, accused of right, and what about what about Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia, who has has uh, was one of the co-conspirators, probably the lead conspirator conspirator in 9/11, the terrorist attack on our own country, right? Is uh, has grotesque, yeah, you know, human rights violations. But what's the difference? What's the difference between Venezuela and and Saudi Arabia? Uh, Saudi Arabia has pumps in billions of dollars into the U.S. economy. Through gun sales, arms sales, not guns, but arms, bombs, and fucking planes. They buy $100 billion a year and shit. So let me read some stuff. And I'll make, I want to make a, uh, uh, I just want to, I just want to look at two, two, how we pick our friends, right? As Americans, right? As American government, how do we pick our friends? Do we pick our friends based on their, their, their integrity and their sincerity to, to the people? You know the people that they serve, the you know the governments, or do we pick it by how much money they got in their pocket? Right, let's find out. Right, so let's look at Venice. Let's look at Saudi Arabia first. Right, fucking Saudi Arabia, I love these guys, right? So, as of 2017, the population was 33 million, right? In Venezuela, it's 32 million. So it's it's like comparable, right? Same number of people, right? And, and very similar uh, resources. We're going to find out that oil, right? But it's very similar in the number of people and the size of the country, right? Uh, per capita in Venezuela, per capita GDP, twenty thousand seven hundred, right? That's pretty high. That's a, that's pretty that's pretty up there. That's, a, that's decent uh, for the number of people, right? Petroleum was discovered on March third, nineteen thirty eight, and full scale development of oil fields began in nineteen forty one. Under the U.S.-controlled Aramco, what we now call Amoco, right? We see Amoco all over the place. That's fucking Arabian oil, right? Oil provided Saudi Arabia with economic prosperity and substantial political leverage internationally. Wow. Well, how come it can't happen in Venezuela? What's going on? We're going to find out. At least we're going to try to. Saudi Arabia has since become the world's second largest oil producer behind the U.S. and exporter controlling the world's second largest oil reserve and the sixth largest gas reserve. It has the third highest total estimated, total estimated value of natural, get, natural resources valued at, get this, $34.4 trillion. Right? That's, that's calculating how much oil is under their feet and how long it's going to last, right? Thirty-four trillion dollars. It's fucking huge, right? And they're the second, second largest oil reserve. Uh, who's the first? Venezuela. Oh, fucking Venezuela's got trillions under their feet. They don't even know it. They're fucking stupid idiots. Fucking socialist jerk offs. In 1972, Saudi Arabia gained 20 percent control uh, in Amoco. Uh, thereby decreasing U.S. control over Saudi Arabia. Right? So the U.S. has got their fucking foot in the door in Saudi Arabia in the oil. Right? We always think of Saudi Arabia as, you know, a bunch of sheiks running the show. They are running the show, but but the U.S. has a, a significant interest in the oil. Saudi Arabia and the United States are strategic allies. And since Obama took office in 2009, U.S. has sold 
one uh, uh, hundred and ten billion dollars in arms to Saudi Arabia. President Donald Trump and King Solomon signed a series of letters for Saudi Arabia to purchase arms from the United States, totaling one point ten billion immediately, and another three hundred fifty billion over ten years. So Saudi Arabia is a good customer, man. That military industrial complex, they love these. They fucking they dropped to their knees for the for the uh, for these Arab guys. It's fucking sheiks. In April 2016, Saudi Arabia has threatened to sell off 750 billion dollars in treasuries. What treasury securities and other U.S. assets? If Congress passed a bill that would allow Saudi government to be sued over 9/11. That's very revealing. Not so much that they're pulling out of 9-11, but the fact that they were ready to pull out seven, almost a trillion dollars in, in, uh, in U.S. Treasury, you know, securities, right? That would sink the economy. Right? If, you, if, if Saudi Arabia pulled that, that's like 10% of the float. If they pulled out of U.S. Treasuries, the fucking economy would go, with U.S. economy, poof. well, Saudi Arabia has some, some some skin on the balls in this game, right? They got the U.S. by the balls with the treasuries, right? And the oil reserves and all that stuff, right? But they play it well, right? How come they're so wealthy? How come they got such such an enormous wealth at the top? Right? In September 2016, right, that, that bill that, that uh, Congress, in 2016, Congress passed that bill, uh, Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, that would allow relatives of victims of 9-11 to uh, uh, to sue Saudi government alleging roles in, in the attack. Congress overwhelmingly rejected President Obama's veto. Fucking Obama vetoed it, right? He vetoed that bill. Why? Because he felt, he felt uh, it was the, the, the politically, uh, he felt that it was the right thing to do for the, for the people of America or the people of Saudi Arabia. No, it's because he's going to pull fucking 700... And fifty billion dollars in treasuries off the table. That's why he did it. Right. Obama and fifteen out of, okay, uh, Osama bin Laden and fifteen out of the nineteen nine eleven hijackers were Saudi Arabians. Right. Just to, just as a, a a little reminder, right? Saudi Arabia is in now. Here's the politics of Saudi Arabia. Right. We we fucking we, we're good business. We do business with them. We sell them stuff. They sell us stuff. Right. Everything's cool. Right. Saudi Arabia is an absolute monarchy. No political parties or national elections are permitted. It is regarded as a totalitarian dictatorship. Open protests against government, even if peaceful, are not tolerated. But I thought I thought that the dictator was Maduro and that we don't fucking deal with dictators. Dictators we overthrow, but here, here we're doing business with Saudi Arabia. What happened? What's the deal? Right? Capital and physical punishments are imposed by Saudi courts, such as beheadings, stonings to death, amputations, crucifixions, lashing and executions. The death penalty can be imposed for a wide range of offenses, including murder, rape, armed robbery, repeated drug use, apostasy. That's trying to convert somebody against Muslims. <laughs> Adultery, witchcraft, and sorcery can be carried out by beheading with a sword, stoning or firing squad, followed by crucifixion. As if they once they kill you, then they, they fucking they hang you on the cross. <laughs> Homosexuals homosexual acts are punishable by flogging or death. Keep your dick in your pants, you fucker. Atheism or calling into question the Islamic religion is considered a terrorist crime. No religious freedom there, right? Lashings are often imposed for... All right, so this shit is... Da it's like fucking barbaric, right? right? It's, this is this is a dictatorship, and they don't have elections. It's a, it's one party, one guy. One fucking guy, the king, right? Allah Baba Baba, Ali Baba, right? Is the king, and, and no elections, right? But we deal with them. No, there's no problem there. No fucking problem, right? It's it's Venezuela, man. Dude, it's fucking... It's the Venezuelans, man. They're giving the fucking money to the poor, bro. You fucking dig that shit? You heard, man? They get, it's fucking crazy, man. They should go to Saudi Arabia. You get fucking lashed, man, for, for trying to give money to the poor. Lashings are often imposed for offenses against religion and public morality, such as drinking alcohol. <laughs> Hey, fucking go there. You drink your alcohol, you get fucking flogged. 
and neglect of prayer and fasting obligations. It's, it's like, it's, like uh, it's religion by force. Public places in Saudi Arabia are gender segregated. Ah, women. Women are dissed. <laughs> Statistics on poverty in the kingdom are not available through the UN resources because Saudi government does not issue any. Right? They hide their numbers on poverty. So what is the actual numbers on poverty? It's a little a little bit has leaked out. In December 2000, I'm going to get into Venezuela in a second, but let's learn about Saudi Arabia, right? So let's learn about it, right? What the fuck? What else Nelson do? In December 2011, the Saudi Interior Ministry arrested three reporters and held them for almost two weeks for questioning after they uploaded a video on this topic, this issue of, of poverty on YouTube. <laughs> Others of the video claim that 22% of Saudis may be considered poor as of 2009. Let's stop right there. 22% poverty in a country that, that's shelling out billions on uh, for guns is generating billions in oil reserve, oil sales right but they have 22 percent i thought they were you know i what, what about what about venezuela we have three percent here they got they we have allegedly three percent that's bullshit we probably have about the same about 22 percent about 20 in the united states unemployment right the rate of local unemployment is 12 point they got almost 13 percent 12.9% unemployment in Saudi Arabia, 22% poverty. All right, so they have their problems too, right? But we don't look, we don't talk about those. Saudi Arabia allows Christians to enter the country as foreign workers, but does not allow them to practice openly. Ost op apostasy, right? Again, punishable by death. Saudi Arabia has religious police. Oh, this is fun. Who patrol the streets, enjoining good and forbid and forbidding wrong. By enforcing dress code, it's like 1984, enforcing dress code, strict separation of men and women, attendance at prayer five times each day, the ban on alcohol and other aspects of that, sheer law. 90% of books are, are religious. Non-Muslims are pro prohibited from entering the holy city of Mecca. Wow. You can't go there, right? If you're, You can't even go and look. You can't even take a peek. Shit's crazy. No churches, temples, or other non-Muslim houses of worship are permitted in the country. Is this even close to what Venezuela has? I, Venezuela is the fucking tyrant. I thought Ven, I thought Venezuela was the tyranny, and 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 Saudi Arabia is a good, good trade partner, right? Well, we're gonna find out about Saudi. Arabia. I'm curious, man. I want to find out about this fucking place, right? Lobbying by non-Muslims and conversion to Mo, to Muslims. To another religion is illegal. That's crazy, man. But it, well, you got to watch when you travel to these places. You might slip and say, hey, why don't you become a Christian, man? You know, fucking chop your head off. Under Sierra law, every adult female must have a male relative as their guardian. Ooh. As of 2008, a woman was required to have permission from her male guardian in order to travel, study, or work. Ew. Ooh, it's like a fucking Garth. Ew, <laughs> that's crazy, man. You wanted women's real, women's rights, right? You support in fucking Saudi Arabia, right? Education is here's interesting. Education is free at all levels. <laughs> right? As they give you this religion, right? Literacy ninety percent. Classes are segregated by sex: men over there, penis, vaginas. Put some space in there. Healthcare in Saudi Arabia is a national, na they have a national health care. We don't even have it, right? System is uh, Saudi and public sector expats are eligible for benefits, including public health, preventive, prevention, diagnostic, and curative services and pharmaceuticals with no cost of sharing. No cost. Wow. All right, so, that's, so that's the barbaric, the, the actually the wonderful. Uh, Saudi Arabia that we love to sell stuff to, sell bombs to, sell fucking stuff to, take their oil, right? And we let them do whatever the hell they want, right? They fucking chop them off heads, right? Well, let's look at Venezuela. The sovereign state is a federal presidential republic. Wow. They have a president and they have a, it's a republic, right? Oil was discovered and here's the, here's the, the, here's the devil. Oil was discovered in the early 20th century and today Venezuela has the 
world's largest known oil reserves and has been one of the world's leading exporter of oil. So how is that possible? How is the how is the how are the sheiks living high on the hog and able to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars on stuff and keep a keep a the monkey, you know, the United States off their back, right? How are they able to do it when they have Venezuela has the number one oil reserve in the world, proven, and Saudi Arabia has number two. Venezuela has more oil than Saudi Arabia. There's something not right about it, right? There's something definitely not right about it. Bolivarian Revolution of 1999 sought to build a mass movement to implement Bolivarianism, popular de democracy, economic dependence, equitable distribution of revenue, and an end to political corruption in Venezuela. So this shit was going down the drain, right? And then this Hugo Chavez, a collapse in confidence in the existing party led to Chavez being elected in 1998. Maduro has been president of Venezuela since 2013 after winning the second presidential election after Chavez's death by 51% of the vote, right? Maduro won in 2018 again with 67.8% of the vote. So he, he won once, he won twice, right? Venezuelan president is elected by vote. Right. We were saying that they that the elections that that they have to have fair elections. Saudi Arabia doesn't have any elections, they chop your head off and and they, they, they uh fucking flog you in the middle of the road, right? But Venezuela has elections and, and uh they're they're the trichia of, of evil. Tyranny. Tyrants, tyrants. Venezuelan president is elected by a vote. The term of uh, uh, six years, office, uh, one term is six years, and there's no term limits. He can keep going. Right? The, vote, the voting age is 18. Vote is not compulsory. Armed forces of uh, th 300,000 men and women plus another 600,000 army reserve. So they got a million, they got a million soldiers ready to go. They're not fucking around. The president of Venezuela is commander-in-chief of the National Armed Forces. So they're proud, they're free, right? Gross uh, um, per capita GDP there is 15,000.6 as compared to Saudi Arabia, uh, 20,000, right? It ranks the 109th in the world. Venezuela has the largest, ex ex the least expensive petroleum in the world because consumer price of petroleum is heavily subsidized. Gas is cheap, right? Oil, gas, right, in Venezuela you could fill up a car for three cents, I'm told. Right. So what is the, as compared to U.S., U.S. per capita GDP, $59,000 per person, right? Now that, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I doubt everything in this country lately because if you're going to say that, that unemployment is 3.4 or 3.7 percent and, and statistically that's impossible, just, just look out your window. It's more like 17 to 20 percent. I don't believe that GDP number. I believe that's that's a rigged uh, U.S. number. Just my opinion. Shortages in Venezuela have been prevalent following the enactment of price control and other policies during the economic policy of Chavez. Under the economic policy of Maduro, greatest shortages occurred due to the Venezuelan government's policy of withholding ah, United States dollars from importers with with price controls. Once you fuck with the dollar, once you use the S word, we're socialist, we're going to give money to the poor, right? Everything goes to, everything, and suddenly you're a fucking, you're, you're a tyrant. See how it works? You got oil and you won't trade with us? You won't give us up the oil? You won't give us a fucking oil, man. We want your fucking oil, dude. In 19, here's some, something very revealing. This, this tells the story, right? In 1973, Venezuela voted to nationalize its oil industry outright. Effective January 1st, 1976, with PDVSA taking over and presiding over a number of holding companies in subsequent years. Venezuela built a vast refi uh, refining and marketing system in the U.S. and in Europe. And in the 90s, PDVSA became more independent from the government and presided over an, open, an opening in which it invited foreign investment. Right? Hugo Chavez in, 19, in 2001 placed limits on foreign investment. See, and that's where it got ugly. It's because the U.S. had investments in the oil, 
Pedavesa, right? Since ni- 1976. They were all set, man. Fucking oil companies sucking that oil, making money on that oil, right? And then Chavez came along and placed foreign limits. And that's when the shit got ugly. Right? They took the dollar, threw it in the garbage. And then the sanctions kick in, right? But Venezuela doesn't have the luxury of Saudi Arabia where they can refinance debt, they can borrow, they can, they can, they can do business because the U.S. has got, them, got a boot on their throat, right? They can't buy treasuries. They can't do anything, right? They're fucking slaves, man. They, gotta, they can't drink their oil. <laughs> Freedom of religion. They have... Fr- okay, so let's go back to social issues right? because that's what it's all about, right? That's why we're invading Venezuela because they're socialist pigs and uh, they're going to eat each other or eat the dogs, right? They have freedom, freedom of religion. According to 2011 poll, 88% of the population is Christian, primarily Roman Catholic. Right? There's a couple of Jews in there, there's a couple of uh, Protestants, 3% atheist. In 2008, 95% literacy. Wow, everybody could read. Right. So religious freedom, uh, right? It's a, it's a, you know, freedom to, to, to buy and sell, right? It's an open economy. By 2018, more than half of the children, this is, this is strange, I don't have the answer. By 2018, more than half of children in Venezuela dropped out of school, with 58% of students quitting nationwide, while areas near border countries saw more than 80% of their students leave. Nationwide, about 93% of schools do not meet minimum requirements to operate, and 77% do not have utilities such as food, water, or electricity. That's crazy, right? And unexplainable. Venezuela has a national... I know you guys just want to throw that fucking S-word, man. Give it to them, man. That, that ter- the terrorists, they terrorized that fucking term. Socialist, you see, it doesn't work. Give them the fuck, give me that fucking oil. I want your fucking oil, right? That's all you guys know, man. It's fucking so stupid. Venezuela has a national universal health care system. Although its efficient efficiency and work conditions have been criticized, it was reported that many of the clinics were closed as of 2014. It was estimated that 80, 80% of Barbario establishments were abandoned in Venezuela. That's, it doesn't really make sense, but... But but I just I mean that's just a comparison that's just a, a little a little comparison because we're we're vilifying one and then who who is not really a villain and then we're stroking the the dick of the other one who is clearly a, a villain right Sierra Law fucking chopping off heads right it, you know women women to the back of the bus right no religion swallow our religion or we'll kill you. Don't talk about another religion or we'll kill you. Freedom of speech? <laughs> Go fuck yourself, man. We're in charge here, man. You will you will bow to the king. You will bow to the king. That's Saudi Arabia. Venezuela is like, we just wanted to try to feed the poor. And we we and, and we wanted we wanted to try our own currency. And we wanted to sell our own oil and and the fucking giant monkey, you know, the monkey on our back, the United States, said said, Yeah? Oh yeah? You're gonna try that shit? What are you fucking crazy, man? We're gonna fucking sink you. You're gonna sink you. That's it. It's twisted. It's a twisted tale of two places. How the United States picks its friends. And let's talk about Saudi Arabia. How much money did they pour into the, you know, into our politics, into the Clinton Foundation? Gave Bill Clinton a million dollars for his birthday. Right? You think we don't know about that? What? It's money, man. It's money. Fucking money talks, right? So. Rather than help Venezuela, the United States' strategy is to, is to destabilize it. And ha- before the United States will help, it must have leverage in their resources. Or they won't go in, right? They won't help you, right? So it's bullshit, right? The United States is not a humanitarian fucking place. It doesn't offer humanitarian effort without... They give with one hand and take with three, right? Here you go and give us this fucking shit. Here you go. You want some of this? They give us all that. You want a little bit of that? Give us everything you got. Right? Empty your fucking pockets. Right? See, that's that's what's. It's like a. It's like the shakedown. And when you watch that interview with Maduro, you realize that he's like he's being shucking down. Right? It's like the mob. Right? They go in there. They de- destabilize the country. They they starve them out with sanctions. Right? They they get a guy a a, a guy train him up in the United States. That uh, Juan Guardo. 
right? And 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 teach him, you know, teach him about you know, the CIA is is instructing him how to overthrow a country, giving him military support, financial support through Venezuela's own own money, laundering the money through the U.S. the oil money and then funneling it back to rebel forces. It's regime change, and it's and it all has to do with oil. It all has to do with economics. It has nothing to do with helping the people of Venezuela. If you wanted to help the people of Venezuela, there are ways to do that by, you know, training, by, by uh, inspiring them to, to become a thriving democracy of some sort. But because they're being choked left, right, and center, with, they got China, they got fucking Russia, they're cutting deals, it, they're incompetent. That's, that's a given. But to, to, um, to for Bolton and and uh, Elliot Abrams and and uh, Pompeo to go on national television, or and everywhere they're fucking everywhere and Trump, calling it the evils of socialism. Socialism will never gain any strength in the United. We will never be a socialist country. Trump, right? It has nothing to do with the S word. It has to do with your your in, inability to inability to deal with someone. Uh, who has a different economic uh, view than yours. Marcus Conti reporting.